Hi, I'm Robin Shears, and I'm very much looking forward to painting and teaching a workshop with you in France this summer. Uh, I'm an Impressionist style painter, and I like to capture what I'm seeing in front of me, um, and but I very much like to play with color and light and kind of push things a little, um, paint loose, and I know that sometimes students are overwhelmed when they first uh, you know, get to a site or uh, have a lot of information to choose from, and one of the bigger problems is where to start. Uh, well, I have a few techniques, um, things I do myself and that I encourage my students to work with, um, tools that help us simplify and to start big with big shapes first, uh, frequently using a no tan sketch to get the idea down um, in the most simplistic form. Uh, just the simple black and white or the light and dark, essentially light and shadow. So once you establish those big shapes, it's easier to first know you have a great foundation to work on and a good design and a, a good distribution of the light and shadow value. Um, and then you can start to apply color in any way you like, really. You could use the color you're seeing represented in front of you. Uh, you might decide to do something in a little bit higher key, um, raise all the shadow colors up, um, or you could do something darker or, you know, bolder. Um, and you just, I like to encourage my students to think that way and working um, in small color studies, um, playing sometimes with different color harmonies um, and things like that that help people begin to think more impressionistically. So whether we're looking at um, photo reference or we're on site somewhere, we want to look for ways to harmonize our paintings and not copy everything we see. You know, frequently if I'm painting like a downtown scene, maybe there's, um, you know, every building is a different color or something. And that can get very confusing and patchy uh, and difficult to depict. So if you find a color a harmony or a, a color that brings all of those kind of together or you mix your colors uh, with their complement to dull things and bring them again to more neutral um, to colorful grays and things, those help solve a lot of those problems that we might find out in the field. So I, I have all my students kind of work through those little steps I think you know if you start with a little bit of planning you can build upon a really strong foundation and that allows you actually to be a little bit more expressive and impressionistic with your brushwork and with texture so with a little planning you get to play a little more uh, another thing I do frequently is what I call a quick start where I really quickly try to grab my first impression of a scene so I'll set myself a time limit even and just capture that essence essentially as quickly as I can and I would like to encourage my students to do that because I think it helps turn off that you know left brain analyzing thinking too much and you just have to dive right in and you're responding emotionally uh, and just pure creativity creatively to just capture that really quick. Um, so I encourage students to do that a lot too, to kind of break down the barriers that sometimes we almost are have stage fright, you know, to start. Uh, it's easier if we kind of set a time limit and say, okay, I've only got 10 or 15 minutes to capture this scene. Uh, what am I gonna do? And once you've done a quick start, sometimes you may have said what you wanna say and you're done there. Um, and those can be really wonderful little vignettes or you know maybe you want to build on that then and that's where you can slow down and begin to kind of step back into your you know the left brain thinking and see you know what needs to be described better or where can you better blend some colors or maybe this isn't a great color here what does it need uh, so once you've, you know, kind of done that quick start, you step back, have a break, look at what you've got, and you can develop it into a fully realized 
highly representational piece of art, or you can leave it really loose, uh, maybe tightening up a focal area, maybe putting in something like a person or a figure, or, you know, defining the building shape a little better or something. Uh, sometimes it doesn't take a whole lot um, once you've caught that really first idea. really looking forward to seeing, you know, the places where some of my artistic heroes have worked um, to get to play with the light, colors, um, the views. I think it's going to be a really fabulous time, um, not only for the atmosphere, the painting, and we'll have both city and country scenes to work with. Looking forward to all of that, and I hope to get to work with you guys and teach a little bit uh, about how to modify and simplify what we're seeing out there.